So, um, I decided to read this manga called Blame. And... <sighs> what the f*** did I just read? Five years ago, I came across a video that for some reason stuck with me for a long time. On May 27, 2017, PewDiePie uploaded something that wasn't supposed to be anything special. Yet for some reason, I still remember it to this day. And it was when he uploaded a video that was called My Favorite Manga. If you are not one of the 2.4 million people that have seen this, I'll leave a link in the description. But if I wanted to summarize it, it's really just a 4 minute video of him talking about what he considers to be his favorite story of all time. That story being a manga called Blame. But simplifying it doesn't really paint the picture. What it really is is a video that's unscripted. It's got barely any editing. It's the furthest thing you would ever expect from the same guy who was known for meme reviews and reaction videos. This was different. This was weirdly vulnerable. It didn't take much time for me to notice that the tone of this video was way more serious. It felt like for the first time I wasn't watching this usual persona that was meant to make people laugh. And he said something that I still think about to this day. I love Blame because of a lot of small reasons. I love it because the art improves so much just from volume 1 to volume 2. It's so interesting to see the artist grow while making the manga and seeing him improve. I, I love because it's an 18 plus manga, but it still takes itself seriously enough not to overdo the gore and all the sexual bits, even though I do love anime titties. I love it because for me, it's like a friend. It's a friend that you can revisit whenever you feel like it and you find out something new that you didn't know before. Okay, first of all, wow. Second of all, this dude just went back to making meme reviews after this and I was just left there with my dick in my hand. I've never been so moved to read a manga in my entire fucking life, so I did. I listened to him and I went to go read Blame. I read the story that he said was really interesting and... Okay, I'm not gonna make the same joke twice. I told a friend that I was gonna be making a video on Blame and he was like, cool, what's it about? And I was like, I don't know. I thought it was just me, but then I googled it and it turns out this is pretty much the universal experience for anyone who's read it. This was by far the most confusing shit I've ever read in my life. I couldn't even find the right way to pronounce the title. I've heard blame, blem, bloom, blom, blam. So it made me wonder, is this guy just about the worst storyteller to ever exist? Or is he a genius? Yeah, spoiler alert. He's a fucking genius. There's two things that I can most definitely confirm about the story of Blame. One, you meet a guy who literally has the word kill in his name. Two, what he has in his hands is basically a nuclear weapon. You could try to categorize the story into genres like sci-fi, cyberpunk, or horror, but that would mean you'd expect this manga to go in a certain direction, and I promise you, it won't be doing that. Blame is about a guy named Killy who's been in search of something called a net terminal gene. In terms of a timeline, you kind of start the story somewhere around here. The catch is that he doesn't even know how long he's been on this journey. An unspecified amount of time has passed to the point where Killy doesn't even know why he's been looking for it, but for whatever mysterious reason, he can't seem to do anything but move forward. And you might ask yourself, well, what exactly is stopping him? One of the things that I've remembered PewDiePie mentioning was that this was a manga known for having barely any exposition. It's not that much of a story. I'm saying that because it has very little dialogue in it. Sometimes chapters go on with no words at all being spoken and I can most definitely confirm that. It's one thing for a story to explain everything to you and assume you're stupid. It's another thing to assume your reader has a PhD in quantum physics. I was getting a bit frustrated at first because my brain is used to every fantasy story starting off with mm, Yes, good evening, fellow adventurer. Welcome to the world of Fleef and Floom, where you can be a mage or a warrior. Blame doesn't feel the need to put dialogue behind what you don't understand. You'll see terms thrown around like silicone life, builders, alternate dimensions, and planets, and time travel without ever being provided much explanation for a lot of it. It's up to you to fill in those gaps in how these things work, and if you don't care for it, then you don't have to. I realized that I was feeling overwhelmed because I don't think I've ever read something that's left me with this much responsibility, which might have been frustrating at first, but actually led to it becoming one of my favorite experiences. And there's a couple reasons for that. I think there's not much need for dialogue in this manga because the panels will do that for you. It's ominous, it's unsettling, and on top of all that, it is just... So cool to look at! I feel like I'm supposed to be able to read these things and realize that cool art does not equal good book. And so I went into this telling myself, cool art should not equal good book.
yeah, fuck you, cool art equals good book. Tsutomu Nihei does not fuck around with his art. If he's going to decide to make a manga that needs a few words, then he damn well knows how to compensate. Look at any of these pages and tell me this guy doesn't know his shit about architecture. One quick look at his Wikipedia and it'll mention that Tsutomu used to work in construction before quitting his job to pursue his dreams of drawing manga. Other than that making him the top five coolest people on the planet, it also shows where he gets his inspiration from. Blaine's got this aesthetic that's just nice to look at. You wouldn't even have to pay me to get something like this tattooed on one of my ass cheeks. The dude's more than capable of allowing his art to speak for itself. He stated before that he found a lot of his inspiration from H.R. Geiger, who's considered to be the father of xenomorphs. I was born in 2001 and I grew up in Germany, so I have no clue what that just meant. I think Blaine feels a lot more like a video game than an actual story to be read. It's exciting and feels like you never have any time to take a step back and breathe. I think that's another reason for the lack of exposition here. There's just no time for it. The main character could be fighting one thing, blow up another, and before you know it, there's 20 more. This manga shouldn't be called Blam, it should be called... <laughs> But you're seeing all of these monsters and probably wondering how a dude that looks like this is supposed to be able to handle this fucking thing. Well, the answer to that question lies in the gun that he's holding. Like a lot of other stories, I think Tsutomu Nihei got a lot of his inspiration from the concept of Guts' sword in Berserk, a weapon so strong that it becomes inseparable from its character. But it demonstrates weight in a different way. Rather than the idea of power being displayed through size, it's about what it's capable of. Yes, I just compared two mangas by using an analogy about dick size. And if that upsets you, go make your own video. In the same way Guts' sword will have a wind-up and a whole aftermath, a gunfire from Killy's weapon will dedicate three entire pages of fuck you. You'll have a panel of the build-up, the shot, and then whatever problem used to be there has now been deleted. There's so much power to this puny weapon and I have no other way of describing it as anything other than awesome. I know earlier I kind of talked about things in a serious manner, but Blame is really just something that's supposed to be a fun read. And not just in the sense that it's a never-ending series of boss fights. It's also exciting to come up with your own interpretations as to how everything works in this world. You're introduced to concepts like different forms of reality and time traveling, which in the way it's presented makes zero fucking sense. But the fun part is that you can make it make sense if you really want to. Part of the experience is that you fill in those gaps yourself, which made this form of storytelling really stand out to me. The fanbase even came up with a blame iceberg chart, and you can decide for yourself in terms of how deep you think the story goes. And I'd say I probably belong somewhere around here. This type of storytelling may not be for you, but hear me out. I think blame kind of enhances what we all go through when we read a manga. It's a form of media where you're never provided with every single aspect of a story, like what it would sound like, feel like, or in what way it would be presented in your head. The fun part is that you get to do that in your own way, so to me, Blame is kind of like the manga version of a manga. <laughs> It'd be pretty funny if I titled this video Manga Squared. Now I'm gonna be honest, it's usually at this point where I get stuck. Is this the part where I'm supposed to like review it and give it a rating? Do I analyze it and explain it to you in a really pretentious way? Or do I just recite how the story goes and basically narrate the plot? I'm pretty sure I would suck at doing that anyways, but I wouldn't do it for something like Blame. I think PewDiePie says it better than anyone else. It's also why I don't really want to talk about the story too much, because I, I think everyone have their own perception of what it is. I feel like it actually ruined it if I explain too much about the story because it's a different experience for each person. A surprisingly fun part of making this was looking up other people's thoughts on this manga. To some, you could think of it as a story about finding your own purpose, or you can look even deeper and say it's a reflection on how we look at our own species. Or you can be like me and think you just read something that went <laughs> During this weird journey of trying to understand what PewDiePie initially meant with his video, I came across a lot of other stuff that felt awfully similar. And it made me realize, holy shit, everyone read this differently. If you just type in blame manga onto your search bar, the really cool thing is that you'll come across dozens of videos of people sharing their own personal experiences of having read it. Somewhere like this guy I found called Insane in Studios, who'll just share his collection of every volume and spend hours upon hours breaking down every aspect of the story. Or video essays that aren't really trying to analyze it and more so talk about the impact it had on their personal life. I found reddit threads that might as well have been a dissertation. There wasn't a single part of me that expected this 65 chapter story to have such an impact on so many people. These were people that shared that exact same passion I saw in that video I watched back in 2017. To me, it's like an infinite loop of boss fights mixed with double spreads you'd want to hang up in your room and frame it onto a poster. But to others, it's something you can always come back to and start at whatever point you'd like. To those people, it's comforting. There's always something new to learn or you can notice a detail that you probably missed during your first read. That same guy who we just talked about has a whole channel and a podcast that breaks down Tsutomu Nihei's work. He even went out of his way to buy the art book notes that the author used for blame and then people fucking translated it into a downloadable document. Did I read that document? 
Yes! Did anyone ask me to do that? I'm... Uh, no. No. No one asked me to do that. But I don't want you to think that I did this all out of spite. I honestly just had so much fun getting all this insight. It's so crazy to me that this guy who quit a construction job in his 20s created something that resonated with this many people. And I mean a lot of people. There was so much fan art out there that wanted to depict their own versions of Tsutomu Nihei's art style. So many never-ending threads discussing how deep the lore goes and how they would interpret it. I'm trying my best to not sound cringe here, but I just think that's fucking beautiful. It's seeing stuff like this that makes me love reading and talking about manga. It's the fact that this guy poured his heart and soul into this book and it resonated with so many people out there. And this made me go back to think about what started it all. It was five years ago when I first came across that video that PewDiePie uploaded. I was 16 at the time and didn't really know anything about manga. I couldn't even understand how a grown adult could get so emotional over a couple drawings. I don't mean to get personal, but it's been so many years since that day. There's so many niche things that I've grown to love along the way. Music, manga. I never thought I'd grow up to be bored in college and start talking about anime titties. But it's videos like the one from PewDiePie and Insane in Studios that remind me why. These are two people that managed to find something near and dear to them. And you may not remember, but at the end of that video, Felix referred to it as a friend you can always come back to. Now, I don't think he had any intent of uploading something that was supposed to be that deep. Maybe he just didn't have any video ideas that day and said fuck it. But five years later, and I still remember it to this day. I can't know what exactly he meant by calling it a friend, but kind of like reading Blame, I just interpreted it into my own meaning. To me, manga is something you can always come back to because it'll always be there. It's that close friend because no matter how much time has passed, you can go right back to where you left off. To be honest, there really is no way to define why something is special to you. Sometimes it just is, and if you're like how I used to be at 16, with no clue as to what that special thing is, I promise you, you will find it one day. To this guy, it's blame. To me, it's Chainsaw Man. For you, it could be a song, video game, hobby. Whatever it is, you won't even have to think about it because you'll know the answer right away. I'd actually love to hear from anyone that watches this as to what you would define that thing that's near and dear to you. Or maybe why Felix called it a friend that you can always come back to. Anyways, thanks. Um, so I'm gonna go to bed now. I'm very tired. It's currently 3 in the morning while I'm recording this, and I've sucked myself into this weird video for nearly a month now. This is by far the most editing I've ever done in my life. The fucking folder for this video was nearly 100 gigabytes. I'm just gonna leave this up for the rest of the outro, because in the 21 years that I've been on this planet, this is the coolest thing I've ever made. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the rest of this segment to shout out some cool things I discovered while researching this video. One, the three people that recommended me to read this manga in the first place. When I saw those, I had this crazy flashback to my teenage years. I was like, holy shit, this is that video that Felix made back then. So, you know, I probably wouldn't have gotten the idea without those comments. Uh, number two, Insane in Studios. I don't know if he'll ever see this, but he is by far my favorite person to have come across during all this research. His blame video single-handedly made me change my entire fucking script. And three, I spent a good day just looking for weird synthwave music for this video, and I found this band called We Are Magonia, and my god do they have some fucking bangers. Anyways, I don't know if you're still watching by this point, but thanks anyhow. Probably gonna read Sunken Rock next, and I've got a couple more vid ideas coming up. Um, you can feel free to recommend me whatever else you think I should check out. <sighs> Subscribe, or don't. Like this unorganized video, or don't. I'm gonna go to bed now. Bye-bye.